I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to be making a video on this or not. But if I am, upper control arm, lower control arms, tie rods, it might be a later video. The lower control arm is this, this one right here, and then this link right there. So those two, and then this upper control arm. It's gonna be fun. So I can't really tell if that is a special bolt back there, or if it's a Just a regular size. So that one right there, and then that one right there. And then you got this ball joint that's right there that you gotta take out. All right, so for the driver's side, for the upper control arm, in order to remove those bolts up, up right there, and then right there, First, you're gonna to wanna to loosen this up, probably not take it off all the way. And then on the driver's side, you're gonna come in here, remove your coolant reservoir. It's gonna sit right here, just like this. You're gonna remove those. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. And carefully set this off to the side so it don't leak coolant. This right here is a 18 millimeter. This, you're gonna remove this bolt. And then there's another one right there that you gotta remove just to get this off. So I'm gonna do that right now. Now, of course with Dodge, everything is gonna be complicated. So this one's gonna be pretty easy to get. The one in the back, I'm still trying to figure out how I'm gonna get that one off. And then over there, that one you gotta remove Stop moving. That one right there, you gotta remove the fuse box, and then there's another one that's right back there. It's gonna be a pain to get, but, you know, I'm gonna try. All right, so once you remove those bolts up there, now you can come underneath here and very stubbornly try to remove these bolts out of this bracketing. All right, hold on, I need two hands for this but you're gonna need to remove that bolt right there and then pull that one right there out. All right, so once you pull those out, this whole unit, so your front knuckle, lower control arm, all of that will just slide forward. You gotta be careful that it don't slam forward because then you'll break even more stuff. Now you gotta get this ball joint out. So basically you can either take a hammer and smack the shit out of this until it pops out that's what I'm going to do because I'm replacing the whole thing. And yeah, so basically I'm just going to pop this whole piece out right here. That's kind of loose. I don't know. Yep, it's going to get, get this piece out. Okay, so what I had to do is I had to put one bolt back into there to hold this arm up here and then smack these threads. Just a little dinky hammer and it ended up coming out. So, this is pretty fun. From here with the upper control arm, it's pretty self explanatory. You just pull this bump back out, this whole unit comes out. You're going to want to clean this up so that way you don't have grease in it, like existing, ugh, existing grease all over that. Clean this up so that way when the new piece gets set in, set in, it's all clean and flush. And it's not a big old mess and I'll rust it out. All right, so now you're gonna take your new unit and what you wanna do is try to do a rough match to make sure that everything lines up. See with this, it's a little too short. So, that might be for the other side. Let me go check. Another thing I wanna let you guys know is, is when you're doing this, try to tie your knuckle to something so that way your brake line isn't just getting pulled on. Because with the, without this string here, well, without this rope here, if you just let this relax, 
the tension that's pulling this out from the weight, it's just gonna pull on that brake line and it could break or snap right there. So you could have a cut in your hose or a cut in the hose right here, or it's just gonna pull on your hose all the time. So you don't really want that because then you'll end up replacing that. Just a little quick side note. All right, so I thought that one was for the other side. It wasn't that part that I got was for a all wheel drive, which all wheel drive is completely different. See with rear wheel drive, even though this is the front, you got two different lower control arms and one completely different upper control arm. Um, ignore that, cut myself, it's fine. Um, so you wanna make sure you get the right one, make sure you get the parts for rear wheel or front wheel drive. But it roughly, this whole process is the same thing. Go in the engine bay, remove the bolts on the inner side of the strut tower well. And then these bolts will slide out. Then you put your new part in and you struggle to get these two bolts back in. See, now with this one, I got that one in, but this one's a pain to get in. It's fighting me. So what you want to do necessarily is keep lifting this up and moving it around and trying to wiggle it while you try to slide that bolt in. And it's kind of hard to do with one hand. That's why I haven't really been recording too much. But right there is the wrong part. That's the wrong one. And that's, you could really tell which one's the right one and which one's the wrong one. Because the right one, it's just shaped like that. That's for the all-wheel drive. This is for the rear-wheel drive. See how this front end, like that one right there, this piece right there, it's not like all this. It's not really that thick, and it's just kind of like skinny. And yeah this one right here it's got it's thicker and it's got a bunch of extra support on it so i had to go out and get a new part but that's what i'm working with now i'm gonna try to set the camera up so you guys can see what i'm trying to do in here but it's it's a pain in the ass all right so like i said you're gonna try to you're gonna push this in this slot and try to get this bolt and then this bolt in here as you're doing that you're just gonna try to wiggle this around As you're wiggling it around, you're going to try to slide this bolt in. You're going to pull on it, wiggle it. Everything you can think about trying to do, try to get it in. Because this is the simplest way to do it. The easiest way to do it is to remove this whole strut tower and then the bolts will slide right in. Because what it's doing is the bolt right here, these two bolts, it's easy to get one in. But once you try to put the second one in, what it's doing is the bolts getting caught right here on these springs on the strut tower. So that's why it's being a real big pain in the ass, if you want to say, to get this second bolt in because it's getting caught on this and it's really hard to move it because it's locked in place over there. So you try to, I'm going to try to loosen this one up, pull this one out a little bit so that way I get more wiggle room. And then try to get this one in more. All right, I'm real sorry if there's a kind of a jump cut, but after you finally get those two bolts in, I've been fighting with it all day and I got tired of it, so. I ended up threading the bolt in backwards through here. So I've been out here for four hours trying to get one of those, these two bolts in. So I got that one in, I got that one in. This one's going in this way, that one's going in that way. And then this, if you get one with the castle nut on it, you want to swivel it around far enough so that way this pin will push through there and then wrap around the bottom of the castle nut. And then from there, you should be ready to go. Make sure you like and subscribe. And let me know down in the comments what y'all want to see next. Well, besides seeing next, I'm going to be doing the lower control arms next. Hopefully, it's not that pain, not that hard. I'm just tired. I'm ready to go back in. It's getting pretty dark out, so. Well, it's starting to get dark. I don't know.